Prevention of pneumonia, prevention includes, vaccination, environmental measures, and appropriate treatment of other health problems. It is believed that, if appropriate preventive measures were instituted globally, mortality among children could be reduced by 400,000, and, if proper treatment were universally available, childhood deaths could be decreased by another 600,000. Vaccination for pneumonia One vaccination prevents against certain bacterial and viral pneumonias both in children and adults. Two influenza vaccines are modestly effective at preventing symptoms of influenza. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, recommends yearly influenza vaccination for every person six months and older. Three immunizing healthcare workers decreases the risk of viral pneumonia among their people. Four vaccinations against Haemophilus influenza and Streptococcus pneumonia I have good evidence to support their use. Five there is strong evidence for vaccinating children under the age of two against Streptococcus pneumonia, pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. Six vaccinating children against Streptococcus pneumonia I has led to a decreased rate of these infections in adults, because many adults acquire infections from children. 7. A streptococcus pneumoniae vaccine is available for adults, and has been found to decrease the risk of invasive pneumococcal disease by 74%, but there is insufficient evidence to suggest using the pneumococcal vaccine to prevent pneumonia or death in the general adult population. The CDC recommends, asterisk young children. Adults over the age of 65 receive the pneumococcal vaccine asterisk older children or younger adults who have an increased risk of getting pneumococcal disease. Asterisk the pneumococcal vaccine has been shown to reduce the risk of community-acquired pneumonia in people with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, but does not reduce mortality or the risk of hospitalization for people with this condition. Asterisk people with COPD are suggested to have a pneumococcal vaccination. Asterisk other vaccines for which there is support for a protective effect against pneumonia include pertussis, varicella, and measles. Medications, 1. When influenza outbreaks occur, medications such as amantadine or romantadine may help prevent the condition, however are associated with side effects. Tuzanamivir or oseltamivir decrease the chance that people who are exposed to the virus will develop symptoms, however, it is recommended that potential side effects are taken into account. Other, 1. Smoking cessation. 2. Reducing indoor air pollution, such as that from cooking indoors with wood or dung, are both recommended. 3. Smoking appears to be the single biggest risk factor for pneumococcal pneumonia in otherwise healthy adults. 4. Hand hygiene and coughing into one sleeve may also be effective preventative measures. 5. Wearing surgical masks by the sick may also prevent illness. 6. Appropriately treating underlying illnesses, such as HIV AIDS, diabetes mellitus, and malnutrition, can decrease the risk of pneumonia. In children less than 6 months of age, exclusive breastfeeding reduces both the risk and severity of disease. 7. In those with HIV AIDS and a CD4 count of less than 200 cells L the antibiotic trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole decreases the risk of pneumocystis pneumonia and is also useful for prevention in those that are immunocomprised but do not have HIV. 8. Testing pregnant women for group B streptococcus and chlamydia trachomatis, and administering antibiotic treatment, if needed, reduces rates of pneumonia in infants. 9 preventive measures for HIV transmission from mother to child may also be efficient. 10 Suctioning the mouth and throat of infants with meconium stained amniotic fluid has not been found to reduce the rate of aspiration pneumonia and may cause potential harm, thus this practice is not recommended in the majority of situations. 11 In the frail elderly good oral health care may lower the risk of aspiration pneumonia. 12. Zinc supplementation in children 2 months to 5 years old appears to reduce rates of pneumonia. 13. For people with low levels of vitamin C in their diet or blood, taking vitamin C supplements may be suggested to decrease the risk of pneumonia, although there is no strong evidence of benefit. There is insufficient evidence to recommend that the general population take vitamin C to prevent pneumonia. For adults and children in the hospital who require a respirator, there is no strong evidence indicating a difference between heat and moisture exchangers and heated humidifiers for preventing pneumonia. 
there is no good evidence that one approach to mouth care is better than others in preventing nursing home acquired pneumonia. Management for pneumonia, before starting treatment with antibiotics for pneumonia, remember the AAO. One antibiotics by mouth, rest, simple analgesics, fluids. Usually suffice for complete resolution. Asterisk however, those with other medical conditions, the elderly, or those with significant trouble breathing may require more advanced care. Asterisk if the symptoms worsen, the pneumonia does not improve with home treatment, or complications occur, hospitalization may be required. Star. The CURB 65 score is useful for determining the need for admission in adults. If the score is 0 or 1, people can typically be managed at home. If it is 2, a short hospital stay or close follow-up is needed. If it is 3 to 5, hospitalization is recommended. Asterisk in children those with respiratory distress or oxygen saturations of less than 90% should be hospitalized. The utility of chest physiotherapy in pneumonia has not yet been determined. Over-the-counter cough medicine has not been found to be effective, nor has the use of zinc in children. There is insufficient evidence for mucolytics. There is no strong evidence to recommend that children who have non-measles-related pneumonia take vitamin A supplements. Asterisk vitamin D, as of 2018 is of unclear benefit in children. Asterisk pneumonia can cause severe illness in a number of ways, and pneumonia with evidence of organ dysfunction may require intensive care unit admission for observation and specific treatment. Asterisk the main impact is on the respiratory and the circulatory system. Asterisk respiratory failure not responding to normal oxygen therapy may require heated humidified high flow therapy delivered through nasal cannulae. Non-invasive ventilation. In severe cases invasive ventilation through an endotracheal tube. With regards to circulatory problems as part of sepsis, evidence of poor blood flow or low blood pressure is initially treated with 30 ml slash kg of crystalloid infused intravenously. In situations where fluids alone are ineffective, vasopressor or medication may be required. Bacterial, 1 dash. First dose of antibiotics should be given as soon as possible. Two increased use of antibiotics, however, may lead to the development of antimicrobial resistant strains of bacteria. Three antibiotic choice depends initially on a the characteristics of the person affected, b such as age, c underlying health, d and the location the infection was acquired. One antibiotic use is also associated with side effects such as nausea, diarrhea, dizziness, taste distortion, headaches. Two in the UK Treatment before culture results is recommended as the first line for community-acquired pneumonia with amoxicillin or doxycycline or clarithromycin. 6 in North America is first-line outpatient treatment in adults by amoxicillin, doxycycline, and in some areas of macrolides, such as azithromycin or erythromycin. 7 in North America is first-line outpatient treatment in in children with mild or moderate symptoms by amoxicillin taken by mouth is the first line. 8. The use of fluoroquinolones in uncomplicated cases is discouraged due to concerns about side effects and generating resistance in light of there being no greater benefit. 9. For those who require hospitalization and caught their pneumonia in the community, 10. The use of a beta-lactam such as Cephazolin plus macrolides such as azithromycin is recommended. Asterisk a fluoroquinolone may replace azithromycin but is less preferred. 11. The duration of treatment has traditionally been 7 to 10 days. 12. Antibiotics by mouth and by injection appear to be similarly effective in children with severe pneumonia. 13. Shorter courses, 3 to 5 days, may reduce the risk of antibiotic resistance. 14 for pneumonia that is associated with a ventilator caused by non-fermenting gram, a shorter course of antibiotics increases the risk of that pneumonia will return. 15 recommendations for hospital-acquired pneumonia include, 3rd and 4th generation cephalosporins, carbapenems, fluoroquinolones, aminoglycosides, and vancomycin.
16 equals these antibiotics are often given intravenously and used in combination. 17 in those treated in hospital, more than 90% improve with the initial antibiotics. For people with ventilator-acquired pneumonia, the choice of antibiotic therapy will depend on the person's risk of being infected with a strain of bacteria that is multi-drug resistant. 18 Once clinically stable, intravenous antibiotics should be switched to oral antibiotics. 19 For those with methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA, or Legionella infections, prolonged antibiotics may be beneficial. 20 The addition of corticosteroids to standard antibiotic treatment appears a to improve outcomes, reducing death and morbidity for adults with severe community-acquired pneumonia, b reducing death for adults and children with non-severe community-acquired pneumonia. 21 Side effects associated with the use of corticosteroids include high blood sugar. A 2017 review therefore recommended them in adults with severe community-acquired pneumonia. 22 A 2019 guideline however recommended against their general use, unless refractory shock was present. 23 There is some evidence that adding corticosteroids to the standard PCP pneumonia treatment may be beneficial for people who are infected with HIV. 24 The use of granulocyte colony stimulating factor, GCSF, along with antibiotics does not appear to reduce mortality and routine use for treating pneumonia is not supported by evidence. Viral drugs used for treatment of viral pneumonia, 1. Neuraminidase inhibitors may be used to treat viral pneumonia caused by influenza viruses, influenza A and influenza B. 2. No specific antiviral medications are recommended for other types of community-acquired viral pneumonias including SARS coronavirus, adenovirus, hantavirus, and parainfluenza virus. 3. Influenza A may be treated with A. Romantidine or amantadine. B. While influenza A or B may be treated with oseltamivir, zinamivir, or paramivir. 4. These are of most benefit if they are started within 48 hours of the onset of symptoms. 5. Many strains of H5N1 influenza A, also known as avian influenza or bird flu, have shown resistance to romantidine and amantadine. 6. The use of antibiotics in viral pneumonia is recommended by some experts, as it is impossible to rule out a complicating bacterial infection. 7. The British Thoracic Society recommends that antibiotics be withheld in those with mild disease. The use of corticosteroids is controversial. 5. Treatment of aspiration pneumonitis, 1. In general, aspiration pneumonitis is treated conservatively with antibiotics indicated only for aspiration pneumonia. 2. The choice of antibiotic will depend on several factors, including, a. The suspected causative organism. b. Whether pneumonia was acquired in the community or developed in a hospital setting. c. Common options include glindamycin, a combination of a beta-lactam antibiotic and metronidazole, or an aminoglycoside. D. Corticosteroids are sometimes used in aspiration pneumonia, but there is limited evidence to support their effectiveness. Asterisk follow-up, the British Thoracic Society recommends that a follow-up, equals chest radiograph is taken in people with persistent symptoms, smokers, and people older than 50. Equals American guidelines vary from generally recommending a follow-up chest radiograph to not mentioning any follow-up. Asterisk prognosis 1 with treatment, most types of bacterial pneumonia will stabilize in 3 to 6 days. 2 it often takes a few weeks before most symptoms resolve. 3 x-ray finding typically clear within 4 weeks and mortality is low, less than 1%. 4 in the elderly or people with other lung problems, recovery may take more than 12 weeks. 5. In persons requiring hospitalization, A. Mortality may be as high as 10%, B. In those requiring intensive care it may reach 30 to 50%. 6. Pneumonia is the most common hospital-acquired infection that causes death. 7. Before the advent of antibiotics, mortality was typically 30% in those that were hospitalized. 8. If lung condition deteriorates within 72 hours, the problem is usually due to sepsis. 1. If pneumonia deteriorates after 72 hours, it could be due to nosocomial infection or exurbation of other underlying comorbidities. 
to about 10% of those discharged from hospital are readmitted due to underlying comorbidities such as heart, lung, or neurology disorders, or due to new onset of pneumonia. 12 complications may occur in particular in a. The elderly b. Those with underlying health problems c. This may include empyema lung abscess bronchiolitis obliterans acute respiratory distress syndrome sepsis worsening of underlying health problems treatment of pleural effusion empyema and abscess one a pleural effusion the volume of the lung is reduced because of the collection of fluid around the lung two in pneumonia a collection of fluid may form in the space that surrounds the lung three occasionally microorganisms will infect this fluid causing an empyema for to distinguish an empyema from the more common simple paraneumonic effusion, the fluid may be collected with a needle, thoracentesis, dot, and examined. 5. If this shows evidence of empyema, complete drainage of the fluid is necessary, often requiring a drainage catheter. 6. In severe cases of empyema, surgery may be needed. 7. If the infected fluid is not drained, the infection may persist because antibiotics do not penetrate well into the pleural cavity. 8. If the fluid is sterile, it must be drained only if it is causing symptoms or remains unresolved. 9. In rare circumstances, bacteria in the lung will form a pocket of infected fluid called a lung abscess. 10. Lung abscesses can usually be seen with a chest x-ray but frequently require a chest CT scan to confirm the diagnosis. Three abscesses typically occur in aspiration pneumonia, and often contain several types of bacteria. Thirteen long-term antibiotics are usually adequate to treat a lung abscess, but sometimes the abscess must be drained by a surgeon or radiologist. Respiratory and Circulatory Failure One pneumonia can cause respiratory failure by triggering acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, which results from a combination of infection and inflammatory response. 2. The lungs quickly fill with fluid and become stiff. 3. This stiffness, combined with severe difficulties extracting oxygen due to the alveolar fluid, may require long periods of mechanical ventilation for survival. 4. Other causes of circulatory failure are hypoxemia, inflammation, and increased coagulability. 5. Sepsis is a potential complication of pneumonia but occurs usually in people with poor immunity or hyposplenism. 6. The organisms most commonly involved are Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza, and Klebsiella pneumoniae. 7. Other causes of the symptoms should be considered such as a myocardial infarction or a pulmonary embolism.